Well, greetings, faithful followers. I'm Brother Jack Angry, along with Countess Boobia. And we're the, with the Angry Brothers Omaha Chakarama, myself, Brother James, uh, the Countess, Inferno, and the rest of the gang want to welcome you to Chop Blocks Horror Network. And remember, friends, Let's keep America on top. Watch Horror Host, y'all. And you can do that on Chop Block. Anything you'd like to add, Countess? Well, it seems like being spooky is in style these days. So, good night and unpleasant dreams. Sweet nightmare. Well, greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, along with the lovely Countess Bubula. Okay, and uh, <laughs> moving on, uh, and welcome to another edition of the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockorama. Tonight, we've got a, you know, a... A piece. Yeah, a, a piece. Piece of what? We're not quite sure yet. We, the jury's still out on that one. But this tea-soaked, limey opus is called Inseminoid. Yeah, I know. It's like uh, when I first heard the tower, the first thing, I, the title, the first thing I did was, "Ew." You thought that you were being dirty-minded. Yeah, in it's all like reality. Well, yeah, we wish this would have been a dirty movie. It might have been a little more interesting, but you know, we're we're gonna give we're gonna give the movie a chance here, people. I mean, there are no, as our good friend Mr. Lobo says, there are no bad movies, just misunderstood. And believe me, for this movie to get uh, any more misunderstood, the cast would have to be speaking Swahili. Uh, this this movie is, is is that bad. I mean, um, you know, the scene where the uh, monster comes erupting out of that woman's uh, reproductive system, you're going to be thinking, wow, good for her, she got out early. Well, if you talk about speaking another language, there is a scene in the film where they're in there suits and you can't understand a thing that they're Oh, saying. that's what you mean when they were talking through their like uh, com yeah. links and yeah, I mean it's it just not, sounded like <laughs> that kind of thing. It sounds like aliens. Yeah, it's like I mean, what the hell? You know, again, that's another WTF moment in this movie. Uh, to give you a little bit about the plot, this movie from 1981 was originally written and wanted to be shot as an alien, basically an alien ripoff, because Ridley Scott had come out with Alien just a few months uh, to obviously do rave reviews and great success. I mean, Alien was a hell of a good movie. There's just no two ways around. Now we've got the other end of that spectrum, and this British dog turd, <laughs> yes, as you know, this pile of steaming excrement with the Union Jack placed firmly on top of it. Um, uh, this movie is basically an archaeological team on a distant planet come across a uh, series of caverns, and in these caverns is a creature who somehow impregnates one of the female members of the uh, team, who then turns into a homicidal maniac and begins killing off her comrades one by one. Uh, she also gives birth at some point to, uh, to this uh, Muppet-looking thing that looks like basically Donald Trump. Without the two. Yeah, without the hair. And, you know, bigger hands. 
and probably a bigger doodle too, but you know, we didn't get to see that. But I swear to God, it looked like, if you look at it, it looks just like Donald Trump, you know. Uh, so I don't know what he had to do with it. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, and you're probably going to wish we didn't, but hey, you know, this is all we got, so you might as well watch it. In Seminoid from 1981, here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. The most dreaded fear of every woman on earth is even more horrifying in space. The inconceivable is about to be conceived. In Seminoid. Are you trying to tell me she's pregnant? The living miracle of creation is now the deadliest force for destruction. <laughs> galaxy where friends become your enemies, nightmares become your life, and life becomes your death. A new generation of adventure is here, and no power on earth can stop it. You have to come out sometime. There's no other way. Now, a different kind of alien is about to be born, and the entire universe is its victim. Outer space is expecting the unexpected. Witness the birth of in Seminoid. It is not a blessed event. Welcome back, faithful followers. What did you think of that? I mean, doesn't that going to make you want to reach for the hand sanitizer? It's like, oh, I feel so dirty. Anyway, yeah, the title was about the uh, the title was about the most shocking thing in this movie. Although there were a few scenes that you know had the potential to be good. For example, um, early on when the uh, one of the female crew members is out there and she gets her foot stuck in a piece of equipment, and um, some crisis is happening and she's only got a limited amount of time to get back into the airlock. But she can't. So what does she do after deciding, well, I'm just going to whip open my space helmet in this airless environment, which if you know anything, you know, we have our, our friends in uh, Texas who are high school physics teachers, uh, our good buddy Ash Non de Plume. Um, I mentioned this scene to him and he was too busy laughing, you know, because the minute she threw her, the visor of her helmet open, her face, every internal organ in her body should have essentially been driven out her mouth, nostrils, and eye sockets because of the change in pressure. You can't do that in an airless environment. Uh, basically, it, what's going to happen is, is that vacuum is going to try to replace everything it can, and how does it do that? It squeezes! And then, apparently, pull out a saw from somewhere. And proceed to saw your own foot off. Like, where, 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 and why do you have the saw in the first place? Well, I guess she wanted to get loose, but, you know, it's <laughs> like, she just takes out, starts deep-throating that air hose, and then proceeds to saw her own foot off. You know, it's like, that really, you didn't really think that through, did you, chick? Upon other things that don't make sense is there are multiple occasions where they're out in the environment without the suits on. Well, without the helmet? helmets on with the beer can looking lights and all of that good, magical. Good point, Countess. Okay, well, there's a big technical, there's a big technical error right there. You can't do that crap in space. I'm sorry. I mean, just ask somebody, find somebody from NASA. Ask Bill Nye. You know, ask Bill Nye what goes on in the vacuum of space. It ain't flipping your helmet up and taking a big ol' whiff of air. No, that don't work. 
you end up, it's a good way to get dead, people. Did, uh, sorry. Didn't you mention something about during filming there were environment changes? Environment changes. I could have, but I'm drawing a bit of a blank on that right now. Oh, I did remember that the film was originally written to be filmed, uh, and it was going to be filmed on a spaceship, uh, but it was changed to a cave-like atmosphere because these were done at the Chiselston Caverns in southern England, um, and that was the only reason they were filmed there is because the director of the film actually knew people in the British Park Service and was able to uh, get that section of the caverns for like uh, for like four days at a very very reasonable cost so they did save a lot of money on the locations and they didn't really have the budget for the hot for the special effects and sets and all all that so they just kind of had to improvise on a lot of things uh, and that's why it was changed to a cavern and alien caves as opposed to a spaceship. Um, and if he actually filmed it on a spaceship, I think he would have probably got sued by Ridley Scott because it would have looked too much like Alien. One thing we digress and forget about is the beginning of the film. Okay. Where the guy looks at whatever it is that he's looking at and then an explosion occurs. Yes, those, he had a handful that, of those crystals. But, but what he looked at, you can't really make out. Hmm. And nobody brings it up in the film. Well, that's that's a very good point, Countess. And I'll have to actually kind of rewatch that film to find out what maybe what it was or what he was looking at. Uh, you know, but after you know, the film was very slow to, to get off to get to the beginning. Um, did have some good acting by Stephanie Beecham, and we're going to talk more about that uh, at the conclusion of this. Uh, at the conclusion of the episode. So we're going to get back to the movie in Sevenoid. God, that just sounds like a Mexican porno film, doesn't it? Not Mexican. Something else. Yes, it's like, well, we're going to just, we're just going to kind of put our heads together and kind of just go, hmm, about that while we're, while you're watching the movie. And we'll deal with that more when we come back. So enjoy. Sweet night. Take it easy. I'm here, okay? Right, now right, just relax. Come on. Give me a hand. That's it. Now take it easy. Come on. That's right. Now. It's okay. Come on, now just relax. No, don't worry. Yes. Now take it easy. That's it. Don't worry. Hold it, Sharon. It's all right. Now, just relax. All right. Come on. Come on. It's not gonna happen. Ah! No! <laughs> There's no other way. So why don't you all just come out now?
I'll be glad when we go home. Yes, I know what you mean. Hey, Ricky. Oh, what's wrong? Ricky. Hey, what are you doing? You gotta find Dean. Hey, where are you Ricky, going? Hey, Ricky. Here. What's up with you? Who? Get out of my way! Ricky, it's all right. It's all right. Listen, Ricky. Listen to me. Dean's not in there. Let's go. Let's go. Get him. No. Stop it. The track. I'll check the other route. We'll get back to the monitors.
left that outer door open. Well, he can't stay there for long. Welcome back, faithful followers. What did you think of Inseminoid? Um, you said that today there was something about uh, night. You had something to say about nightmares, Countess. Well, did this movie Inseminoid you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, but the only nightmares I'm going to have about this movie are, are going to be, oh my God, my fans are going to kill me. They're going to run me out of town on a rail. I could be tarred and feathered for this one. You know, they're going to actually treat me like I'm the hack, you know? It's actually not sweet nightmares for this one. No, no, it was nothing sweet about this film. Although there were some good bits. Um, for example, uh, when uh, Barbara, played by uh, Stephanie Beecham, who's an excellent actress, very gorgeous woman, uh, love that British accent, is hacked to death by Jackie, played by Judy Geeson, who is inseminated and under the control of the alien, who, by the way, looks like a Donald Trump Muppet with no hair and even slightly bigger hands. You know, it's like... I wonder if they knew something we didn't. Hmm. Let's just mull that one over for a second. I, I'm sorry. Go I started to contemplate in the movie if maybe she was doing these things by choice. Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, I, I gotta kill everyone who knows about this film. I can't put this on my resume. <laughs> anyway, uh, she proceeds to uh, hack Stephanie Beecham to death with a pair of scissors. Uh, you know, a particularly bloody scene. Uh, there was a lot of uh, people being blown up. Uh, one gal was strangled with some uh, wire from a computer console, and a lot of people, some people were shot with alien ray guns, or not alien ray guns, but the futuristic ray guns that they use in this movie. So, I mean, they were pretty creative about the mayhem used. It just wasn't filmed very well. Um, this, you know, a little bit of trivia about it. This was the, uh, basically the film debut of one of the actors, Robert Pugh. And I'll bet when he saw this movie, he probably went Pugh as in P-U. Does this film stink? Anyway, um, the movie uh, only had a, a four-day window to be filmed in because the Chiselford Caverns in southern England, where they were shooting this, uh, that was all the time that they were allowed to use that location by the British Park Service because of a little under the table deal the director made with uh, the British government. I don't know how much he paid for it, but the, uh, basically the whole budget of this uh, film was $2 million, which by 1981 standards was a good deal of money. Um, what isn't, wasn't the biggest sum of money that a film production ever cost, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a our, no, it wasn't, definitely wasn't insignificant to say the least, and the, uh, the production crew was already running out of money towards the end of it, uh, because they were, uh, there was, uh, the, towards the end when they were in the uh, control center, you'll notice that that film, or that was shot from a bird's eye camera angle, so it means it was above and looking down on the actors. And the reason they did that is they couldn't afford to build any more sets. Uh, and that was actually filmed in a soundstage in London, and it was a pretty empty soundstage. So what they did is they just had the camera pointing down on the actors, and the actors were kind of saying their lines and looking up towards the camera to change the perspective. And so they'd simulate it was being filmed like in a cavern or from a catwalk or something like that. Um, it's, you know, they were trying to be, they were really reaching for straws and trying to be creative at that point. you got to give them credit. Well, that. yes, you do. I mean, it's like necessity and a zero bank balance is the mother of invention. Trust me. Um, I, you know, I speak from personal experience on that one. Uh, this movie... You know, uh, normally we rate the movies at the end of the show and on our scale of one to five Reggies. One being an absolute dog and five being essentially Night of the Living Dead. You know, but we didn't, uh, we didn't, we didn't get to a five, certainly. I mean, we were lucky, we were pushing it 
It was a Herculean effort just to get to a two with this this tea-soaked stinker. Um, and the gal who played Jackie, Judy Jason, uh, was in the PBS special called Danger UXB. Uh, like I said in the last episode, Unexploded Bomb. And that's exactly what we had here. We had an H-bomb, people. Or any kind of bomb. Well, there you go. If this movie could have been measured in destructive force, this movie would have flattened several small towns, believe me. Uh, well, actually, no, it would have flattened maybe a strip mall someplace. That's how bad this one was. But, hey, it had some, some fairly attractive girls in it. Uh, I think we got to see a couple of frontal nudity shots in it. So, for, for you kids, uh, it wasn't a total loss, you know. So, Mom, Dad, you're welcome. Now, next week, we're going to be bringing you two more great bad films here on the Anger Brothers Omaha Chakrama. Uh, so from myself, Brother Jack, the Countess, Brother James, Inferna, uh, Lady Torrid, Ash, Sin, uh, Gulia, the rest of the gang here at the Monastery of Mayhem, good night, unpleasant dreams, and let's keep America on top. Watch Horror Host, y'all. Good night. Thank you.